Hi y'all. My name is Maggie Dickens and I'm a professional counselor and personal coach in Houston, Texas. I'm also a member of the American Society of Clinical Hypnosis Regional Workshop Committee and we have decided to put out this video to help you as a faculty member for one of the ASH virtual workshops. And this video is to help you better understand how to take your awesome teaching and um, presentation style that you are so used to doing and so good at doing in person and translating that to an, um, a virtual format. Not a lot has to change. And at the same time, a lot has to change. And so we're going to talk about as much as we can in a short period of time. The first thing to note is that Ash will be hosting all of the virtual workshops on Zoom. Zoom is both a browser-based system software platform as well as an application software platform. And we highly recommend that participants and faculty members download the most recent Zoom application to their desktop, laptop, smartphone, or tablet, whichever device that you will be using for the workshop. And the reason for this is the browser works, but it is not as robust and the troubleshooting is a little bit more difficult. And so we highly recommend utilizing the latest version of the Zoom application. We also recommend that you use a desktop or a laptop. And the reason for this is that the screens on smartphones and tablets are much smaller. They are also utilizing a different type of software. So you have your mobile software and then you also have your um, desktop laptop type of software. And it's just a lot easier and smoother to um, utilize the non-mobile versions. But going back to the screen size, or at least I think I said that, maybe I said it in my head, um, the screen size of those mobile devices are much smaller, meaning that when you are on your phone, you are going to have to just keep scrolling side to side in order to see all of the participants. Especially if you are presenting, you would end up needing a tripod or something like that to hold up your, um, your phone because you don't want to be sitting here like this for an hour to two hours. Um, I guess you could put your arm in catalepsy, but that would be, um, well, that would be interesting, wouldn't it? Anyway, the other reason for, um, or the other thing to note about a desktop or a laptop is just ergonomics. So for those of you who have a laptop, one of the things that happens, so I'm on a 27 inch, um, iMac and so I'm able to look I'm able to sit straight and look straight forward I'm not having to look down at a laptop or I'm not having to look up at a screen mirror to a television or something like that if we are going like this or like this we're gonna end up with a lot of strain in our neck and our shoulders for some of you this is old information but I just wanted to mention it since this um, online format is looking at a computer for anywhere between five to seven hours um, in a day. So if you are going to be using a laptop, I highly recommend finding some books um, and just raising that laptop up so that you're able to look forward instead of down. Okay. Um, the other piece when we talk about looking forward is I'm going to show you a couple of things. So one, you can notice I'm wearing blue light glasses so you can see those. Um, there are ways to make that better and worse. I have just given up on trying to pretend I'm not wearing them because my eyes get too much strain without wearing them throughout the day. As you can see, I have a lot of lighting on in here. So I will show you, this is um, kind of show you what the lighting would look like if I didn't have my um, my ring light on so that takes my ring light off um, and then I'm also going to just switch to this and that is without my big overhead lights on so while this is much more um, friendly <laughs> to my eyes and probably what your in-person offices look like very dim very um, comforting for those of you in beha behavioral health we really do want to mimic that harsh fluorescent lighting um, 
in a video setting because we want to be able to really see you. On my computer, I have a built-in camera. Most laptops have this and many desktops have this as well. If you have a, if you have a computer that you have put a third-party um, camera on top, you are even looking a little bit higher. So I will let you guys know that the way that I am structuring this in order to look at you and have some eye contact with you, which is really important, and I am also not looking directly at the camera. When I look directly at the camera, my eyes are going up just a little bit, and you can see that I'm not looking directly at you. And so I am looking in, in this area. And so this is really helpful in creating that um, in that eye contact and, and that connection with people through the interwebs. Um, another thing to note is that if you notice, and I'm hoping that it's being captured in the, the recording of this video, that I have my name listed here in the corner. Everyone will have their name based off of what you have registered your account um, with Zoom to be. It's a free account, um, what you've registered that to be. So if you are using your spouse or your colleague's Zoom account, it's going to come up as someone else. And that is totally fine. There is a way to rename yourself. If you have someone else's name and you are a faculty member, please let Kathy know um, so that when she's letting people in to the workshop, that she'll know it's you, even though it says um, somebody completely different. We're gonna talk about the chat. So at the bottom of the Zoom window, you'll see several buttons. You'll see mute, stop video. Um, when you hit mute, just as I did a moment ago, you will see a red line go through, as well as everyone else in the workshop will be able to see that you've muted yourself. We recommend that all participants and faculty members keep themselves muted unless they are actively participating in a discussion. There is also a stop video function, which I'll use right now. And I'm able to stop my video and remain unmuted. With the stop video function, this is really helpful, as I mentioned, for faculty members to get their photos off of, or their videos off of the screen. And we talked to the participants about how to do that. The other is it's really helpful sometimes, um, or it is helpful when we're doing demonstrations so that we end up with a side-by-side -side view of the facilitator and the recipient of that demonstration. If you find that you are unable to start your video again or unmute yourself, it was more than likely because a host, an ASH staff or one of the chairs of the workshop has muted you or taken your video off. And the reason for this is that you may have forgotten and there's some background noise, a dog barking um, or a, a spouse coming in to tell you about a phone call or something like that. And so you will have been muted and your video um, stopped those kinds of things. So just do a chat to um, the ASH staff or the, um, the host of the meeting and you will be able to get your video back on. All right, so you'll also see that there is a button that says participants. You can click on that button and you can see all the participants that are in the meeting. You can see if their videos are on or if their videos are off and if they're muted. The chat function is a really great way for, excuse me, for the faculty members to discuss with one another and with ASH staff, as well as for the participants, to, excuse me, to ask questions. If you noticed in the schedule, you have been asked to participate not only as a small group facilitator or a um, presentation, um, an education session, or as a backup for those presentations, those um, education sessions. This chat backup, um, we don't have a better word for it, 
is for you to be in the lecture in the same way that you would be if you were in a conference room while somebody else was um, giving a presentation and you're answering any questions that may come up in the chat. Um, you're also providing any sort of support as you would um, if you were standing in a conference room live. Well, all right. So I know this has gotten a little bit long already, but I did want to jump into discussions about small group practice. Now, there is a full 25 minute video that is for the, uh, the participants and it is a recording of a slide deck review that I have gone through that is also gone through during the workshop. It goes through the format and the forms. So if you were completely new to the 2019 standards of training um, format for small group, please go take a look at that link. It is in um, the Google Drive that I'm gonna show you guys in just a minute. And you are welcome to take a look at that and get more familiar with the roles um, or the forms and the format of the small group sessions. We've been doing these this format for quite some time as it was being piloted before adopted officially in 2019. So most of you were already familiar with it, but if you need a bit of an, an update, take a look at that video. Um, I will mention that there are specific time frames for each of the four level one small group sessions and the three level two small group sessions. And they all have um, a specific purpose. So um, the four in the small group practices of level one, they're building on each other. And so take a look at the faculty instructions um, for small group that was sent out by Ash staff. And I'll also show you where to access, access that very easily um, online. And that will give you an idea of what is going to be covered in each of the small groups for level one. There's a demonstration that will be given right before each of the small groups in level one. And that will be demonstrating the specific elicitation that the participants will be practicing during the following small group. And so it is highly recommended that if you are doing small group practice only, if you will um, arrive to the Zoom room at the time of the demonstration and not only the time for the practice session. This will allow you to see what the participants saw as they're gonna have some questions and it's also helpful to understand um, what they will be practicing. Also, in level two, they will be practicing um, three separate cons um, uh, applications, sorry, three applications of clinical hypnosis. Um, anxiety, metaphor, and pain management. And so they will be doing the full anatomy of a hypnotic experience and applying anxiety and chronic pain, pain management and um, metaphor. And so it's a little bit different than the level one that has the four that are building on each other. All right. And so if you have any questions specifically about what um, topics are being covered, please reach out to the chair of your workshop or the chair of each level, and then we'll be happy to discuss that more. So let's talk a little bit about how to pass off the forms for small group when you are in an online format. Some of you will be familiar with Google Drive, and that is going to be the software that we are utilizing in order to seamlessly pass off information and forms to one another through the web instead of hand to hand. All right, so I have set up a Google Drive folder that will be shared with each of the faculty members. If you don't have a Gmail address, it is going. you are going to have to re-verify your email after about after seven days and so if you are part of both weekends or you access this very early um you'll just need to re-verify it's a super simple process it's just they send you a, an email and with a code in it and you just add the code so you don't have to have a gmail um, email address so you are now able to see the Google Drive folder. So um, I'll just show you, this is what my drive looks like. I've got a whole lot of things in here. I utilize Google a lot. Um, but what I'm going to be doing is I'm only going to be sharing with you this one folder. 
Okay. So you will have access to only the December virtual workshop or I guess this is for more than one workshop. You will have access to one specific folder um, and it is for your virtual workshop. And that way you won't get lost in any other information. So when you access that folder, there are going to be several folders within that. And um, right now, all I've built in, in at the timing of this recording is level one. And so we'll just go through and you can see what's in the level one folder. So there are multiple folders in here. Um, there is level one small group practice. So let me go back to that here. So level one small group practice. This is all things related to the small group practice. And you have the blank forms for the small group practice. So here is where your faculty instructions are. So if you're not familiar with the format or use of forms, um, for small group practice um, as they are now with the updated standards of training as of 2019. Here is all of that information. You'll even see the, I know that's super tiny, like I said, just go to that video um, that I have linked and I'll show you where that link is so that you can um, see how to move through um, who's a participant and who is a facilitator. And so you're going to see even the breakdowns for times and you will have also the information of what is it that they are working on in each of these small group sessions in level one. Again, this is specific to level one um, in terms of what they're doing in each of these sessions. Scrolling down, um, it's important to remember if there are any what we call ab reactions or anything that's important to note. Typically, in person, this would be written on a big colorful piece of paper and when you hand that off to the next faculty member, they're staring at it or you're able to pull them over into a corner and talk with them. In an online format, that's going to look a little bit different. And what that will look like is after every single small group practice and you leave your breakout room, and you go back into the big group, send a private chat to the ASH staff member that will be in that Zoom room. And that ASH staff member will update the chair as well as put the information in this um, Google Drive for the next facilitator of that small group. Um, so as you can see, there's just all kinds of information for you. There's also a duplicate duplication of information here in your faculty instructions as well as another part of your Google Docs, but I like to have them in two places. This is just some information that the participants have um, and that is some signs of trans. So this is what they're being taught, taught to look for when they are observing. Now this form is super important for every person who is doing small group facilitation, whether that is level one or level two. And the level two or intermediate um, training is also gonna utilize this rapport form, which is a bit new for some of us. And this rapport form in the very first small group session takes anywhere between 10 and 20 minutes. And it is meant to be a very quick and specific way to learn about, create rapport with the, the members of the group, as well as get that language from the participants um, in order for the facilitator to create specific language for them. And so the way that this is completed is covered in that video that I've mentioned before. The main thing to note is that faculty members are filling out this form um, for all members of the group. So one form for all members of the group as each column is a space for each member of the group. Um, group size is anywhere between four and six people. The goal is five. Um, 
And if you are facilitating level two small group sessions in this question where it says, do you have any prior experience with hypnosis? Asking them when their last um, hypnosis training is really helpful as we have some people who are speeding through from only having a month or two in between level one and level two. Um, and then we also have people who take maybe even 10 years, 20 years um, to come back for their, their level two um, training. Once you are finished with any form that you complete as a faculty member, this includes your rapport form, this includes here, this is the level one, um, nope, that's not accurate at all. Don't pay attention to this part. Um, I think I need to add in the faculty feedback form. That's something I need to add here. Um, all right, so I'll add that in. Once you complete your faculty feedback form and the rapport form, you will want to either, depending on how you complete it, whether you complete it um, on an iPad and you're writing it down, or you're typing it into the computer as you're going along, or you print it out and handwrite it and then scan it and put it into your computer. However you end up with a digital copy of these forms onto your computer, you will then upload them into the Google Drive. So how do you do that? So when you are in the level one small group practice in the Google Drive, you'll see this folder here that says small group practice faculty forms completed. And right here are all of the different small group practices and we have named them by color. The reason we name them by color versus by number is it can get very confusing to say it's level one, small group practice number two, group number four. <laughs> um, that is just, that's just way too confusing. And so we are uh, using colors. So it'll be level one, small group practice two for group teal. And what you'll do is if you are doing group teal, what you can do here is you just either drop your files here, meaning drag and drop them from your computer. So I'm gonna screen share my entire desktop. I don't even know what's on here, but that's okay. Um, and you can see that here, I have just a form over here that's sitting on my desktop. Um, let's say that's a screenshot that I did, or I saved something from typing it in on my computer, or I scanned it in, right? So it's here on my desktop and I'm able to just drag and drop it in and boom, it's there. So the next faculty member who is facilitating for group Teal is able to go in and take a look at your rapport form and the faculty feedback form from when you facilitated small group practice with group Teal. So if you have any questions about that, please reach out to Ash staff as they are going to be your tech support throughout this entire workshop. All right, so there are just a couple of other things that I wanted to mention and um, that is in the Google Drive that is really important and really helpful for you. There are, there's going to be a folder here that's important information for faculty. So this is something that you're gonna wanna take a look at beforehand because in here, there are faculty members, phone numbers, um, highlighted of who is the chair of level one, level two, and the entire workshop, as well as the link for each of the Zoom rooms, level one or level two. And this is a great place to, for you to just kind of highlight if you want to you. There's also links here to instructional videos that I have created. And so there is a link here for the video that was made for your virtual workshop. So there's gonna be a welcome from the chair of your workshop as well as some vital information for the participants. This is specifically to the, to the participants, but there's some information that you would benefit from as well. There's also that small group practice forms and format video that I was talking about um, with you a bit ago. And so here is that link. Right now I'm recording the video that will end up going right here. And so you'll have a link to this video if you'd like to go back and watch it as well. Um, there is also going to be 
um, the schedule and the faculty grid. So you'll always have access to that and this will always be updated with the most current version. So if the chair of the workshop changes anything, if there's any tweaks, um, the whatever is in here, there's nothing in here just yet, um, whatever is in here is going to be the most updated version. There's also going to be the emails that is sent out by the chair of the workshop, as well as any other important um, emails that go out. I know sometimes emails can get lost. And so for this workshop that I'm recording this um, right before, this is um, chaired by Linda Thompson, and she sent out an email on actually this morning. And so I just copied and pasted that in there. So you have all of that information in multiple places. And this allows for ease in finding exactly what you need um, at any given moment. And I think, let's see. Oh, and participant um, emergency contact, physical address, and phone numbers. This is here, it's just gonna be a Google document here or maybe multiple Google documents, um, sheets, or um, a Word document or something like that. And this is gonna have the most up-to-date and accurate information as we have it um, for the participants. This is very helpful as you'll notice in the welcome video I talk about. Any unexpected events, you know, alien abductions, magical tornadoes that take you to Oz, those kinds of things. Um, if the participants were to go through something like that, we would have their physical address at the time of the workshop, their emergency contact person, and their specific phone number. This is also helpful for any tech concerns. And there is a place for evening reorientation and check-in and reports. Um, in previous workshops, we've called every single participant afterward and noted it down, noted their reorientation level and any concerns or questions that they may have had. This format is being updated and will be conducted online in a group setting and individualized for those that need it. And there will be a document here that's just going to be updated on um, what their check-in is and if there were any things to note. Um, and so there will be more information given to you if that is a role that you are um, playing in this upcoming workshop. I believe, let me stop my share there, I believe that is all of the information. I think I've been talking now for way too long. And um, again, if you have any questions, any comments or concerns or just um, wanting some specific information, please reach out to the chair of your workshop um, and or ASH staff. And thank you all for being a part of this workshop. Being a faculty member for ASH is something that I love to do and I know it is a commitment in order to get slide decks together and to find time away from our busy schedules to be present. And I am very grateful for you and the the time commitment that you are making to this workshop. The participants are better for it and we are so very happy to have you on board. Again, if you have any questions, please reach out um, and we will see you during the next workshop. Take care.